Welcome to my channel everybody, my name is Caleb, and this video series is going to give you everything you need to know to be a Java developer. So we're going to start you out from a complete newbie, and by the end of this series, you should be writing Java applications like a pro. And here is this beautiful speed drawing that you guys can stare at for a couple minutes while I talk. <laughs> One thing that makes this series unique from all the other Java series on the internet is I don't have the goal of boring you to death. I'm going to try and make everything entertaining and fun. Now, I'm just going to tell you up front, though, that it does take work to learn any programming language, and you're not going to get there without practice. So with that, I wanted to introduce the sponsor of this series, Pramp. For those of you who don't know, Pramp is a website that you can practice your coding skills and your interviews. It's a peer-to-peer -peer interviewing system, so you get matched with other engineers like you. This website is huge if you want to get a job as a web developer or a software engineer. I use this website to practice my data structures and algorithms, and it was tremendously helpful. But that's not their only topic. They also have system design, front end, and even behavior interviews. So, you know, if you're a socially awkward weirdo, you can go check out Pramp. <laughs> Overall, Pramp is an awesome platform to practice your technical skills, your interviewing skills, and prepare for interviews at companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, Spotify, and more. So please go give Pramp a try, you won't be disappointed. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So on with the Java programming language. Java is one of the most popular programming languages, and it's often taught in schools. One of the huge benefits of Java is that it allows you to build an app that can run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it allows us to make an app that can be used by as many people as possible with as little work as possible. And we're gonna talk about how all of that works in this series. But what you need to know now is that Java is a very powerful programming language that can enable you to make some pretty sweet apps. Some of the things we're gonna talk about in this series is just the Java fundamentals, so how to actually use the language, but also some of the technical details and the how and the why behind what we're doing. So I don't want you to get from the series what to type, I want you to understand why we're doing that and give you that foundation to be able to write your own applications. Now I think one of the problems with people who study programming and just don't get it is they dive in a little bit too soon and they don't really understand what they're trying to do. <laughs> so first we're just gonna talk a little bit about the architecture of Java. Java. So we write code, which is basically a series of commands to tell the computer what to do. And Java has made the process of us talking to the computer super easy. And why is that exactly? Well, the reason is because Java is a higher level language. And what that means is it's actually a couple steps away from talking to the computer directly. So we basically talk to Java and something that makes sense to us and then that's converted to something the computer can understand. So if you wanted to see this visually, it would look like this. Boom. Now there's a lot of stuff here, but we're gonna go through it from beginning to end. So when we write Java code, that is known as source code. And these files are going to be named something with a .java at the end. So the asterisk just means any file. So something .java. And what happens is we compile this code into what's known as bytecode. We don't actually look at this bytecode, but it's a very important step in this process. The bytecode is going to be dot class. Then what happens is each one of these operating systems can understand this bytecode. We don't have to worry about writing something for Windows and then rewriting it for Mac and then rewriting it for Linux. We just write one thing in Java and the rest is done for us. Right now, this seems a little bit magical, but there's a few things that make this possible. The first is what's known as the JDK, the Java Development Kit. And as you would guess, this is how we develop in Java. So the JDK is up here. It gives us all the tools that we need to program in Java. The part down here that allows our code to run on all these different operating systems, this is known as the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment. So there's the JDK and then the JRE. You can remember which is which because the JDK is Java Development Kit and the JRE is Java Runtime Environment. And when I say runtime, just think of running the actual code. So each one of these operating systems runs our application. If this just seems like a bunch of jargon right now, trust me, by the end of the series, this will be like second nature. <laughs> but just to overview, we, we write Java code and we do that with the help of the JDK. And then we compile our Java files to dot class files which contains bytecode. And then this bytecode is ran by these different operating systems using the JRE. So one thing that's always kind of annoyed me with Java is that if you have Java installed on your computer to run certain applications, it asks you to update like every two days. <laughs> and that drives me crazy. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. But that thing that's asking you to update is the JRE. It's what allows people to run Java applications on their computer. To put this into context a little bit more, if you go on the internet and search Java, 
what's going to happen is you're going to come up with this java.com and this is the JRE. So this is what people are going to install to run your application. The other thing is the JDK. So if we search JDK, well now we have something else, the Java SE. The SE just means standard edition. It's the free version that everyone can download and use. This is what we are going to download to start programming in Java. When you download the JDK, that's going to include everything we need to run Java as well. So we're gonna be able to develop and run our Java. So this includes the Java runtime environment. You don't have to worry about downloading both. So what we're gonna do is go to this website here and download Java SE. And the version might be newer, so that should be okay. But this is the version I'm gonna be using for this course. Now you're going to need to download the version for your operating system. I'm going to be developing on a Mac, so that is the one I am going to download, this bin.dmg. Oh gosh, you have to accept. There we go. I'm gonna let that download, and that's all I really have to say to introduce Java for you guys. In the next video, we are going to create our first Java program and just talk about all the pieces to getting started. Before you guys go, I want you to check the description because there's going to be some other resources for you guys. Specifically, each one of these videos is going to be tied to a blog which has the code there for you guys to copy and paste or read through if you prefer that. And also there's going to be a link to a Java crash course. This is something you guys would be interested in if you want a nutshell version of this series. So if you want to review everything we talked about in this series, or if you just want some more hands-on examples and want a syntax reference guide for all of the content, check that out guys. That could really be good if you want to prepare for a job or just study for an exam. Definitely recommend it. Last thing, there will be a link to the sponsor who has been tremendously generous in helping me make this series. So please go to their site, sign up, and give it a try. That's what I did. Honestly, it was one of the best decisions I made. I ended up using Pramp for personal use to study for a technical interview that ended up going really well. So I'd highly recommend them. With that, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.